he lifts our hands up and he says, for Amen. where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the Most High, the Maker of all things. So we rejoice in his presence tonight. Yes. And we ask if you have any prayer requests, please send them to us at 407-490-4019. We'd love to pray for you. 407-490-4019. It's power in prayer. And we are here wanting to pray for you. So we'd like to start with Psalm 91. His power in his word. We will continue declaring his powerful word. And we're two or more gathered in his name. He's in the midst of us. So let's declare it together tonight. That's right. And let's begin with Psalms 91. Amen. He who, who dwells, dwells in the secret place, place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him I will trust. And surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be a shield and buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in the day. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. And your line and the serpent you shall trample on the foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. Let's welcome Pastor Street. Who's going to... Uh, Well, I'm going to interrupt that for one minute, and as you probably noticed, uh, my beautiful wife is crying, so I, I feel it's appropriate right now that we pray. And um, hmm, I don't normally cry, but I could cry. You know, when we go through seasons, uh, you know, we want people to know we're real. This church is real. The people are here are real. Pastor, of this church is definitely real, and. Uh, just wanted to let you know, because we were talking about praying, I want to just extend uh, your chance to be able to pray for him and his family. Uh, it's tough. It's tough for me to even speak of it, because it's a brother. Hmm. Just give me a second. Hey, uh, we found out that his brother had just passed away. And uh, that's today. And today, the man that I look up to as my pastor, he said... Uh, that this is his peace and joy. And he will be doing the Bible study tonight. So uh, that's who represents this church. And that's who you're going to be listening to. Somebody who doesn't just believe in what God says. He walks it and limps it. So I think it's appropriate that I tell you that. I'm sure that he's well. Uh, he's pleased that I am. Because we want prayer for his family. Not just for him. But his whole family. And it's, you know, we're a body of believers. Around the world we, we give this message. And uh, you don't really find out what's going on. But tonight... You're coming behind the scenes. We need your prayer. His family needs your prayer. He needs your prayer. I need it because we're all connected. So uh, as I pray, please pray with us. You know, and if, uh, you know if, if I believe what is true, our prayers are hitting the throne room of heaven and the answers are coming back down. And those answers are going to be powerful because we got an army of prayer going now. So I want to pray for him and his family. So Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have a father who listens and he wants his children to talk. We are talking now, Lord. We come and we, we just lay it down at your throne room right now, Father. We don't understand the seasons, but it is appointed for all men to die. And when it happens, it's not easy, Lord. And, and it's unexpected, it's even harder. And I pray, Father, that the peace, your peace, that will overcome all understanding, will just hit Pastor Sri and every one of his family members. You know their names back home, around the world, the people that... I've loved this brother, loved that family, Father. In a time of trial and trouble, Father, you are the answer, you are the peace, and you are the way to that peace, Father. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in and 
and just move amongst our circumstances right now. I don't deny it, but I deny it's right for the enemy to take us out. We won't shut down the pulpit. We won't shut down our mouths no matter what the enemy does. I'm blessed to be around a man that, that, that lives as an example. I pray, Father, that you will give us the strength, each and every person listen to me, that can be like that, that can, it can, can be the example that Christ, up until his last breath, he never stopped fighting. I pray that, that you will come in agreement with us tonight, Lord. Right now, Father, each and every person, I pray hedge protection around Pastor Shri and the Verabathini family, wherever they are, Lord, that you will be a blessing to them, Lord. What the enemy used as to try to be destruction, that you will use it for good, and people's lives will be changed because of it. I come right now in the name of Jesus, and I declare blessings over this circumstance, over the situation. Everybody who has tears, let them be tears of joy, because God is in this house. Let this move of the Holy Spirit be evident wherever we go. And when we talk about Pastor Sri and his family, that they are blessed to be a blessing. That's the motto of this church. And tonight, I believe that all around the world, the people that know that family understand today is a special day of prayer and remembering his brother. And if you could do that, everybody say amen. Amen. Well, thank you. Give, give a hand clap. I'm giving a hand clap for my brother. And I will tell him publicly, I love him. And I'm going to say it to everybody around the world. He is the real man of God. And he's coming to teach you in a time where he probably should be sitting. But he said this is his peace. I pray that his peace comes over you too. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. God is good, isn't it? Amen. <laughs> no matter what we go through, no matter what happens in our life, God is still good. God is still on the throne. God is still working on our behalf. He never gives up. As the word, as we have sung the song that His love never gives up. So I'm uh, reaching out to His love. I'm continually dwelling in His love. And I'm thankful for all the brothers and sisters who continue to pour the love of God into my life. I thank you for everyone that is praying for me and praying for our family. I particularly ask you that you pray for my um, aunt that uh, is there in India. Um, she has uh, a lot of burden on her heart right now that uh, the comfort of the Lord will take over, Amen. take over our family. And thank you. So let's get to our Bible study today. I found myself, when I celebrate, I celebrate in God. When I cry, I cry in the Lord. Amen. I rejoice in the Lord. I cry in the Lord. I celebrate in the Lord. Because He is constant, no matter where I go. No matter which part I go. You know, David says, where can I run from you, Lord? If I go to, show, if I go to hell, you're there. If I go to my ground you're there if I go to mountains you're there if I no matter where I go you're there so um, I just want to appreciate the constant consistency of the Lord in my life and um, this is this is for me I, I rejoice in his presence I take comfort in his presence and uh, I thank God for his presence and his uh, word that is alive in our lives. Amen. 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 So there is a lot of burden on my heart and uh, all the emotions that we uh, I'm going through right now. I feel it very important for me to stay focused on what God has called me. Amen. 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 Um, every time we have an opportunity, storm comes in our lives. Every time something like this hits something unexpected hit, something, some sort of a sickness hit, some sort of a sorrow hit, some sort of a suffering hits. Um, Bible doesn't uh, guard us from that. Instead, it says that you will go through them. And then uh, it even gives us an option to come to Him during that time. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just coming to Him. I'm just coming to Him. I want Him, as much as He, uh, I want Him to speak to you, God, I, wa I even want Him to speak to me. Even while I am preparing for this Bible study, the Lord was speaking to me about some things that brought me 
a great peace no other words could bring to me. So I'm thankful, I am thankful and grateful that my God is real. Amen. Amen. And He never leaves me nor forsakes me. So we are uh, today at the last uh, uh, part of our uh, Bible study, in the sense, uh, Bible study of uh, the book of James. Hope you are getting something out of this. Uh, I really desire to uh, finish it off today unless the Lord leads us the other way. Um, James 5th chapter. So the focus of uh, the day uh, uh, is riches and brotherhood. Riches and brotherhood is the focus of today. Uh, I'll tell you uh, more about it as we go through this. So um, go with me to the book of uh, James chapter 5 starting at verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl, for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. And their corrosion uh, will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed, the wages of laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not uh, resist you. Now he goes on, therefore be patient until the coming of the Lord. I'm going to come back to this, but here I want us to understand the address here uh, when James is writing, he's talking, he's going directly and saying, come now you rich. So I'm going to take a pause and uh, study a little bit on that because um, oftentimes I see a lot of the preachers uh, preach about the riches and uh, uh, the damages of the riches and all those kinds of things. Um, even though I, I get it, but I want us to understand the perspective here. You know, Bible clearly says uh, money is not the root of evil. Bible clearly says that. Money is not the root of evil, but the love of money is. Um, so is anything. So is anything. Love of anything. Love of education. Love of knowledge. Love of uh, things. Love of uh, uh, stuff. Anything that you love uh, that has the power to take you away from God-given uh, destiny. If you really look at it in this uh, particular uh, passage, the main thing you see here is your riches are corrupted. He never said riches are corrupted. Mm -hmm. And all through the thing he says, your garments are moth eaten. Your, your, your. These riches are all self-centered riches. Everything was focused on them. Everything was, you know, it's like one of those things where they have come to the place where they, they, they took it upon themselves that either, uh, um, either they, 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 they uh, um, said, I made myself rich or I was the one that I was able to achieve this. I was the one that uh, have come to this place. And again, a rich doesn't always equate money. I want us to understand that. When we are, whenever we are treating with the rich, rich is not always about money. Rich is anything that is plenty. Anything that you may see or, or have it as an abundance. You know, um, I have uh, come up with a statement for the uh, riches. I would say something. I'm going to explore more on this. One thing is, what not to use your riches for? You know, I may not be able to tell you what you should use your riches for or what you sh uh, where you should your, your, use your riches. I may not be able to clearly tell you black and white, but I can for sure tell you something is what not to use your riches is not to depend on God. Amen. Never use your riches not to depend on God. Never use your riches 
of knowledge not to depend on God. Never use your riches of gold and silver not to depend on God. Never use your riches of relationships not to depend on God. Never use your uh, uh, familiarity or the, or, the, or the popularity to be used to not depend on God. That is the problem here. The problem that uh, James is addressing is not really about the riches, but your riches. You know, um, we have to, uh, uh, Bible makes it very clear, God is fine uh, uh, by being rich because God uh, promises in the word that he, my God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. According to his, not us. Not us, us and our education, our this, our this. The moment you are thinking or, or I mean, sometimes those thoughts could be coming, but the moment you start to do, dwell, I made myself rich or I made this happen, or that is a place where you do not want to be. And that is the warning that he is giving here. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. That just catches my attention. In other words, um, if that was not last days, could you heap it? Maybe. Why I say that? I know this reminds me of the story of Joseph for me. You know, uh, when there was uh, abundance of uh, rain and all that, he heaped up treasures. He heaped up all the grains, all the food that is uh, uh, produced by the land. He stored them everywhere possible and he just but when the day of famine has come, he distributed them. He was willing to let that go. He didn't just keep it to himself, but he was willing to uh, give it. Um, the problem, again, you see that the fourth uh, verse, Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. The fourth verse says that, and then the, the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. That just uh, 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 tells us that, you know, everything that God gives us is purposed. Everything you are growing in or growing with is purposed. And us as, as believers, you know, I don't talk about the people that are in the world, this book is not written for the people in the world, it's written for the believers, amen? He's talking about the brethren, he's talking about the body of Christ, he's talking about the people inside. The people that are inside that are still depending on their riches, you know, how many of us do that? I'm just going to simple example. We look at our paycheck before we cry unto the Lord. You know, many times we look at the riches of the, 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 the medical advancement that we have around before we look at the Lord. There's nothing wrong in, in, in getting medication or there is nothing wrong in, in eating a good, good meal or in, there is nothing wrong in wearing good clothes. Nothing wrong according to the Word of God. But what, uh, what, what, what really um, uh, gets us is, the moment when we get, go there, are we not looking at God? You know, are we forgetting that it is the source that gave us these resources? It is the source that, that enabled us, that gave us this, this wisdom or this insight. The problem uh, with the Lord, I believe, is not that you have more. No, never go, don't get it wrong. It is not that you have more. It is about... How willing are you to let it go? How willing are you in letting it go? What I mean by that, it is not, I'm not talking about socialism, which is a sin again. We covet other people's riches. That's, that's not what God says. God never says that. God never, you know, he wasn't telling, oh, why didn't you give to the people all around the world? He wasn't complaining about that. He was only talking about the cries of the reapers have reached the ears. Or, or, or the, uh, um, the, the mold, the laborers who mowed in your land, you have kept their paycheck back. The people that are involved are, are rightfully uh, there to get it, 
Did they get their fair, did they get their share? Did you are you are you taking it away from them? In other words, there, there is so much that we have to go through here for us to break it down. It just looks like a black and white statement, but it is not. You know, with God, it's always multidimensional. Amen? Yeah. It's his response to us, his word, his instruction to us is always multidimensional. It is not just in one thing saying, okay, hey, do this or not. You know, there are so many dimensions that we have to go through here. He, he talks about, you know, uh, um, why, you know, the, the, uh, the people that should, you know, many times this is what I teach my children, my family, this is something. Anytime we bless, we are blessed by something, the first thing we do, if, if we uh, got in a house or if we got in a, a car, or, or I'm talking about the materialistic things. And if we have received those things, the first thing I say is, okay, thank you, Lord, for this. Amen. And then the second part I say is, like, what is the purpose for this? Should I be enjoying it or is it, does it belong to someone else? Or I even claim it over it, Lord, even if I use it and then after that it has to go to someone else, help me be that channel that I can give it to that person. Amen. If this belongs to someone else, if I'm just a steward of that, I should act like a steward. Now God expects us to be stewards. Not, not in many cases we expect as though we are owners. In all reality, isn't the earth all his? Yeah. Isn't that the word of God says? It's all his and when he gave it to us, yes, he wants us to enjoy. There is nothing no wrong with that. He gives all things richly that we may enjoy. That is his plan for us. But nevertheless, we have to have the mindset, if this belongs to someone else, it has to go there. Much less I will grab someone else into my life. And I'm going to just uh, give us a, a small situation. Think about it. If you are attitude of life, if you are attitude of, uh, uh, of uh, addiction or attitude of living in sorrow, if that is stealing someone else from their day's joy, isn't that stealing? They have worked all their lives so that they can have a moment of joy and now you just trampled all over it. Bible says the laborer is worthy of, your, of their wages, but you have played the devil's cards and you stole it from them. That's why Bible clearly says be peace givers. No matter where you go, you, you bring peace, not turmoil, not struggle, not, not distress, not all those things. It's easy for me to do that. Wherever we go, can we bring that into someone's life? Instead of that, 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 that negativity or that, that uh, 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 sorrow, or, you know, when we do that, what are we doing? We are stealing it from them. Yes, I get it. It is upon them to enjoy their life or not. I agree with that. I agree with that. But as a Christian, can we make an effort to give people what belongs to them? How many of you believe everybody life, everybody's life should have peace? Yes. Amen. If you believe you should have peace, don't you? Should you not believe the other person should also have peace? Amen. If you believe you should have a joyful life, should you not believe they should have a joyful life? You know, this should change all of our attitude whenever we work, wherever we work. Do unto, unto others as you would like to be done unto you. What is that? What is that? If you don't want someone to steal your joy, why are you stealing someone else's joy? Can we be conscious of that? The world doesn't have an idea about this. Because the world is caught up in one thing and one thing only. It is called selfishness. Me, myself, and I. Unfortunately, many Christians are circling around that same mountain. Me, myself, and I. What about me, George? What about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? It's a robot thing. I think I like that thing Joyce Meyer does. The Joe, what about me? What about me? She does. She she used to do that in her conferences, 
I mean, like, even though it looks so <laughs> crazy, but I think it is so real. We are like those robots. We wake up. What about me, God? What about me, boy? What about me? What about me? What about me? And then, in, 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 in the process of this, one of the big things that we are facing these days is is the knowledge that we are accumulating. We accumulate a lot of knowledge and we try to keep it to ourselves. And the problem is we look at ourselves as we are better than others because we know something. And even to the point like I, 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 even I see some preachers think they are better because they got some revelation. No, no, no. The revelation has been given to you because he wants it to be given to others. Amen? Amen. If other, others won't get it, that's on them, not on you. Not on you. You know, we have to understand many times God is giving things to us spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, relationally, so we may give to others. Maybe God has blessed you. Maybe you have worked with God's principles to have a strong marriage, so now bless somebody that doesn't have a strong marriage. Maybe you have been blessed by God with the understanding of how to run a strong family. Maybe you will be brought into the people where they don't have what it is to have a strong marriage or a strong family. I know it's demanding. You know many times giving is demanding, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always easy. It's not just, uh, just like, oh, okay, whatever. Many times life is on purpose because that's why Jesus said, take up my cross. Because it requires a sacrifice, it requires a purpose, it requires something more than you. If that wasn't the case, Jesus doesn't have to go through the cross. He saw, he found something more than him. Imagine that sometimes. It just blows my mind. God thinks I am about him. Right? He thinks more valuable about, uh, uh, than his own life. He thinks about us like, oh, you're more valuable than my own life. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That we have such a, such a caring God that can, that can think like that. So he brings to this place, when you think of rich, it's not just about that. Today, we have all these people that just get puffed up because they know something. They have this knowledge. We are, we are facing that battle right now because they have knowledge or they have some of these things that they have figured out. Guess what? Maybe I don't know what is E equals MC squared. Maybe I don't know how all these forces are working around me. Maybe I don't know. But God has an answer for that. That is where God is trying to bring, tell us and come bring us to a place rich. I'm talking about you. You have accumulated something that I have given to you, not for you. Many times I see this uh, false uh, 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 notion that comes especially even to the doctors. They think, hey, I am protecting you. I am helping you with my knowledge. But to begin with, no, but that is not yours to begin with. That is not yours to begin with. If you are able to invent a medication, if you are able to invent a tool, bless God for that. But don't forget, he is the source. Amen. All we have is resources. You and me very well know resources can deplete. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. You know, some of you who grew up playing uh, certain video games are not available now. Because it was a resource. It's gone. Some of the things that you grew up with are not available now. They're gone. Because they're resources. So let's go with me to the first Corinthians chapter 1 starting at verse 18. First Corinthians chapter 1 starting at verse 18. For the message of cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us can somebody say to us? To us. It is us. We have to understand. This is upon us. This is upon us believers. This is upon us Christians. Who are being saved. It is the power of God. 
The foolishness, what is being considered by some group as foolishness is also being considered as some people the power of God. I beseech every Christian, I beg every Christian, we are trading our, our, our specialty of seeing this as the power of God to the foolishness of people's perception. We are trading that. That's what church have done. We traded. We traded the power of God. Now we started implementing that cross is foolishness. Because we, we, we done bought into the system. We bought ourselves into the system and now the system is dictating us, hey you fools, the cross is nothing but a foolishness. And we are just looking at it from that angle and we are trying to give up on our advantage that God has given. The vantage point that the Lord has given us. That when we see this thing, we wouldn't say, hey, it's not, it's not foolishness, it's the power of God. That's the vantage point that God has given us. And now he sees, he says this, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Is there anybody who is going to argue with God about that? <laughs> Think about that for a moment. Maybe some of, some of us are being labeled as fools, or some of our uh, belief system is being labeled as foolishness, but that's all right. It's coming a day where the Lord is going to prove that you guys are fools. <laughs> he comes up with a question, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Think about that. You know, it might sound foolish for some of us to come to the presence of the Lord when you are sick or when you are hurting. It might sound, but for me that is wisdom. Amen. That's why I'm standing here today even though I, my heart is bleeding. I'm no fool, not trying to be fool, I'm not trying to be anything, but I'm just seeking the wisdom. Amen. I'm just trying to draw from the wisdom. He says the question, I want to ask the same question, where is the wise? If you think you are wise, your wisdom should be in distribution. Did you crack something? Did you figure out something? Give it to others. Let us, let us not, not hold it to our, ourselves because the Lord has given it to us so we may give to others. Amen. We may give to others. Like I said, um, I'm not here to tell you what to do with your riches in a way. But I'm telling you one thing, don't do one thing. That is to walk away from God. Because you have money, because you have education, because you have family or because you have these things or no matter what it is because it, thank you Lord it, sometimes riches some people have a richness of sorrow in that sorrow they reject God I know people that have rejected God because they have too much of guilt We do that many times because we are going through a suffering or we are going through a sorrow or because we are going through a pain in our lives, we reject God. And I believe this is where God is challenging us. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the wise? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. Sounds so philosophical, but it is so simple. What you think is not what, you, what is right. That's why the Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes. It's as simple as that. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. You know, that also, that, that, that is what uh, satisfy my, satisfies my intellectual self. Many times my intellectual self tries to tell me, are you trying to tell them to believe in a God they, that they may never see? <laughs> <coughs> mm. 
that they may never have an opportunity to touch. You are preaching to them, you are you're so passionate about this person. But I say this, that same foolishness is saving someone who is believing. The same foolishness of me, my foolish preaching or my foolish things that seem like. But that is what is saving. So what? You know, many times salvation, we look at salvation in big things. Because we think our problem is too big. So we look for big things to happen in our lives. The bigger trouble has to have a bigger solution. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I remember this, uh, I may have shared this story with you. There's a man that was, uh, um, I was walking on the street, there was a man who, uh, 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 his uh, uh, vehicle broke down and his wheels are like, it's like, like a monster truck type of a thing. It's a tractor that is used for agriculture. It was driving on the road and it broke down and he was sitting there. He is actually the owner. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's been struggling for one hour on getting something out that he may fix and go. He's struggling for almost an hour. And that happens to be a Sunday. He can't call on a mechanic or anything like that in our area that I was walking. So I just go there. I see him and the Holy Spirit convicts me saying, go help him. Uh, what do I know about this? Um, but still, I'm, uh, uh, I went there and I was looking at this big old tire. It's so big, huge. I can't even, you know. I, if it is up there, I, 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 you know, it's way taller than me. And this tire is looking and he is working at it. He is sweating. I can tell. I can tell he's frustrated. Then, then the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord comes upon me and he says, he gives me a small thing saying, ask that man to hit it differently. Just a simple change in the orientation that he is doing. And there comes the nut out that he's been struggling for almost two hours. <laughs> I could have made it a bigger deal to make a, give that bigger solution. That is not, it is a simple solution. After times we just look at things and we think, man, this has to have a bigger solution. But the Lord says, no, 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 I'm going to answer them through the foolishness. The insignificant. You know, it might look like, oh, if I have, if I have, I have to store it. The Bible says, no, 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 give it. Think about that logically. In my intellectual mind, I'm like, you got to be out of your mind. You got to be out of your mind. But my foolish self says, do it more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind being found foolish because in, in God's court, I'm being counted as the wise, as yeah. the saved. I can take that on me any day. Now for Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Look at that. I'm not talking about a God who swung his, 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 his sword against the enemies. I'm not talking about if you study Hindu mythology or any other mythologies that are out there. It's all about the superheroes. That they, they, they swung their sword or they, they swung their arrow or something like that and to bring down the evil forces. But here we are, we are talking about a helpless man who is on the cross who was crucified. If that is not foolish, I don't know what is. I'm calling him a hero who was crucified. But to Jews, a stumbling block and the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than man. Glory be to God in heaven. Yes. That alone is enough for me. That is satisfying. That, is, that, it, that gives me a lot of satisfaction that I can find myself in the Lord. Now why I'm going after this thing, I just don't want us to forget the source of our life. 
the source of our wisdom, source of our riches, source of everything that we have in our lives. Don't forget. Even in your sorrow, even in your suffering, even in your joy, even in your, in your uh, 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 conquer, or even in your conquest. That's a big thing to chew up. Many, many of us forget God in our conquests. Let me get there and then I will tell God. You know, many times I see people, oh, let me clean myself so I can go to God. But he says, no, 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 walk that with me. No matter what it is. And as we sung the song, love has a name. And also it says, victory has a name. I like that. I like that. My victory, I'm not looking. I, I, I don't have the means. I may, I may not have the money. I may not have, have the riches. I may not have the education. I have this thing like how John and, 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 and Peter did. Gold and silver I have not. In the name of Jesus. He was begging all his life, that man. He was begging all his life, but he was never able to Get that, that breakthrough for him. But these two foolish people. Amen. Amen. These two foolish people. Were able to stand there and say in the name of Jesus. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> because the, <laughs> the, all the money that has been given to him didn't fix his problem. All the family that he has didn't fix his problem. But these two fools that believed in this, this Christ who was crucified, these two fools have come and they said in the name of Jesus. That is why I'm here to say again, God made foolish the wisdom of this world. Amen. God made foolish the wisdom of this world. God has given us so much. God has given us so many things. Uh, and you can read the rest of the chapter. You will see how God has chosen the weak things. If you want to find the glory, you may be found in the weakness, not in your strength. Because your strength ought to be a weakness where you would have a weakness to say, Lord, I thank you for giving me this. I thank you, Lord, for, for, for I, I, I didn't have this understanding yesterday, but now I have it. Amen. But what does that mean? Also, I want us to grasp my head around this thing because many times we forget giving, you know, when God wants you to give, it's not like, you know, um, um, if you read uh, for a minute, Matthew 10th chapter, starting at fifth words. Matthew chapter 10, it reads like this. These 12, uh, uh, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles. Do not enter a city of, Sam of the Samaritans. But go ra rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now look at this. Look at this. This is the most challenging thing he says. He says, go and preach. And then he says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. <laughs> that ought to be foolishness. <laughs> Look at the system that we have now. We want the sick to be sicker. Nobody is in the business of healing. They want them to be sick. They want you to keep, me, keep me putting the medication, keep, keep doing the same thing again and again. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. What, you know, what is that for a reality check? Raise the dead. Will that be a challenge to pick on? You know, let me tell you something. Your foolishness can raise the dead. Amen. Not your wisdom. Amen. Your foolishness can raise the dead. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Dead doesn't have to be always the dead that is buried or anything like that. There is so much that you can pour into the, the, the situations that are dead. But you can raise it. Cast out demons. Now look at this. This is the key, I believe. Freely you have received, freely give. 
Freely you have received, freely give. There is a lot of uh, uh, things that you have to dissect here, but I'm going to go at, at a few things here. Freely you have received. In other words, <laughs> you cannot give to somebody who cannot receive. Are you with me? Have you ever tried to give to somebody who don't want it? I have. Many times I tried. They rejected me. They rejected me time and time again. There are people I would ask, can I pray? They would reject me. And there are people I want to I wanna go, let me help you. They rejected me. You know, Jesus right now, the, the biggest example that you can have, Jesus died for everybody, yet yeah, every, most of them are rejecting him. So now is it really free? You know, sometimes all these notions that, that they have, uh, uh, you have to give it freely. Free doesn't always mean there is no money behind it or there is no, no, no effort behind it. You know, Jesus died for everybody. That doesn't mean his salvation is coming to you for free. It is made available for everybody, but you have to believe. Amen? Amen. Now, you know, it's simply to put, make yourself available. Make it available. Whatever you have, whatever God has given, can you make it available? That is what he is saying. Go heal the sick. Go make yourself available for the sick. Go make yourself available for the lepers. That doesn't mean you, you find the lepers everywhere in the world and go. And if, if, if there is no invitation, what will you do? Even Jesus himself is reject, rejected. Are you with me here? Freely you have received, freely you give. So in other words, what God is giving us is he, he is putting us in a place, hey, let yourself be a flow, not a reservoir. God has never called us to be a reservoir. He wants us to be a channel where he can flow and continue to flow through us. That's why he is talking and challenging his rich people, saying, hey, 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 rich, don't you stick to your riches. Don't forget, it was me who gave that opportunity to you. Had it not been for my creation, you would have never become rich. So that's where he is giving us, uh, uh, many times I want us to think about this thing. Am I stealing someone from their opportunity? You know, God has given you time. Can you give time to somebody? Think about that. Maybe your time is very expensive, yet can you give it? That's one of the things that is so common in the Western society is to give time. Everybody has, a, has an idea, I need to do some volunteer work. The premise for it is all from the Bible. But anyway, therefore, be, uh, I'm going back to the James 5th chapter 7th verse. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Wait patiently for it until it receives the early and the later rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. How many of you know this was written 2,000 years ago? Amen. If they are seeing it at hand, I, I bet it, it has come closer now. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen. So, but what he's saying here, do not grumble against one another, brother, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Look at this. This always is shown many times. I took a while of suffering. People go through those things. But I'm here to tell you, this suffering may not necessarily mean a suffering of lack, but a suffering of rich. These people were given the revelation of God. The prophets were given the word from the Lord. Think about that, how hardy you can get. 
when you are uttering, thus saith the Lord. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. We talked about endurance. But I'm also here to bring on to you, can you endure riches? Can you endure riches? The riches of the knowledge. The riches of revelation. The riches of, of, of money. The riches of anything. You can imagine. Can you endure those riches? Don't forget it was he who gave you freely. So freely let it go. Mm -hmm. In other words, make yourself a channel where people can access it. Maybe, so for example, say like a book. You God has given you a revelation for a book. And you put it out there. You don't have to distribute it freely. But making it available. Maybe there is somebody out there who can buy it. Make it available for them. People that can't buy it. They can't afford it. Maybe give it to them freely. Just making it available. Making myself available. What God has given. Maybe he has given it to you. For that particular person. Remember the challenge Esther had it? Maybe for a day like this, that the Lord has given you this queenship. Maybe I'm giving you the voice of Mordecai. <laughs> maybe for a time like this, maybe for a day like this, that God has given you this. You have heard the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord. The Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath. But let your yes be yes and no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Now this is where I'm coming to the brotherhood. Brotherhood is mingled up. This is what we have to understand. How God has created a system that would bring results for us. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Now look, it's changing. He's talking about you take care of it. You pray. You take care of it. You do this thing. You, you pray. If you are cheerful, you sing a psalm. You do it. Right? But the next verse where it goes, 14th verse, he says, Is anyone among you sick? Now the dimension is changing. He says, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Amen. What a powerful, powerful opportunity the Lord has given. Only, only when we can give and receive. This is not an exercise of authority or anything. It's an exercise of brotherhood. So in other words, why in the beginning he says, Hey, if he can deal by yourself, deal with it. If not, go. Go to public. Go to your brethren. There are, there are, there are two ways that you want to understand, understand this situation. This goes two ways because the, an initiation has to happen from both sides. When I am, I am suffering, it is me who has to check it, who has to pray. When I am not able to break through, when I am, it is overwhelming, what do I do? Call the elders. Call my brethren. Come on, brethren. I need you. Like how I am crying today, I'm not able to stand here because I've prayed, because everyone is praying with me. I'm not standing here because I'm a strong man, but it is because everyone is praying for me. I, I, I just cry out. You know, I tell everybody, pray for me. Can you pray for me, please? Amen. I need your help. I can because it becomes a sickness. If I don't deal with it, it will become a sickness. I got to deal with it. I got to deal with this thing. I'm not going to let it, you know, it's not... Mm, there are some things that are personal, but not a lot of things are personal. 
When God made us the body of Christ, he took us out of being personal, being private to public. We are a public enterprise, you know. <laughs> like it or not, everything is in public. You don't have to be ashamed of it. Why I give that? Now the answer here is, and the prayer of the faith will save the sick. That's an exchange that has to happen. Both of us come. Both of us come to in, in that faith. And when we both come in faith, that could save the sick. I come with my faith when my brother comes in agreement, when my brother comes and lays my hands on me, when my sister comes and lays hands on me, when my sister is preaching, when my sister is singing a hymn. Oh yes, I'm bringing my faith to this so I can have the healing. And the Lord will raise him up. Glory be to God in heaven. Can we give the Lord a chance? Can we give the Lord a chance because we are yielding? Freely we have received it, freely we will give. And the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Now look at the secret here. He says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. What a powerful intertwine the Lord is giving us. Confess your trespasses to one another. We have to confess to each other. And not only what, I, what, what we should do as a confession, that is, you know, uh, Christians have a very bad, bad example here. When somebody is confessing, we go talk about them to others. <laughs> Their struggles. Yeah. That ain't our business. That is not our business at all. Amen. Because my business, if I am crying to you, my business is that you would cover me. Amen. That should be our business with, with each other. That's why I made this statement saying, covering in prayer what is exposed is your brotherly duty. I'm going to repeat that. Covering in prayer what is exposed is your brotherly duty. Amen. Can we give that to each other? Can we give that to uh, uh, each other in marriage? This is a big struggle in marriages too. We don't give each other the space. I tell you, wives, I encourage everyone that is out there, don't talk about your husband's weakness to others. That's the last thing you want to do. That's the last time you will ever hear him open. There has to be a mutual bond. Between each other, when we confess the church has abused so much. We the body, we have to hold each other. Remember the sickness doesn't have to be physical. It can be mental, it could be spiritual, it could be financial. No matter what it is, it's the same formula. Amen? Yeah. Pray for one another and you will be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Yeah. And he gives a wonderful example. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. We look at the story of Elijah and we think, wow, what a crazy deal, man. But Bible says he's just like you and me. Is it not case like you and me? If God can work through him, he can work through us too. That's right. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. What an amazing power we have as a brethren. We can even dictate the affairs of nature. Huh. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So I'm here to encourage every one of you. I am not here to tell you what to do with your riches, but I'm here to tell you what not to do. Many times if you can figure out what not to do, you will be all safe. Many, that, that, that's wisdom many times. You just need to learn what not to do. 
Many times God exposes you to the things where you will understand what not to do. Before you learn what to do. So I'm here to encourage every one of us, let us not our, use our riches to not depend on God. That is our biggest thing. And then with this statement I will end. Cover, covering in prayer, what is exposed is your brotherly duty. It is your brotherly duty. There is no way around it. If someone is confessing something to you, it's not that you are special or better than them, it is for you to cover them. You know, he talks about the backbiting, the bickering and everything in the, in the book of uh, First Corinthians that we talked about. It, it is just not, not, not uh, good for us to be in that place. So you, we just need to understand, hey, let's, let's stick to this thing. Let's stick to this game. So we may all enjoy what God has given. God has ordained a system for us which might look like foolishness. But let's follow it. Amen? Amen. We got something out of this? Yes. Amen. Awesome. Awesome to God be all the glory. Thank you so much. I believe with this we will end our Bible study on the book of James. I pray that uh, the Lord will um, enrich you with this and expose you into more revelation which would help you in growing and drawing closer to you because the Covenant Fusion Church is the model of the church is helping his people draw closer to him that's all we we are not perfect we are not this we are not that we have only one mission to draw to help you so that you may get closer to your god amen nothing else amen amen god bless you we love you hope to see you soon and uh if we don't see you next week or anything happy thanksgiving i think we will see you sunday god bless you bye, bye.